In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the process of securing your website from hackers. The last thing you want is for someone to gain access to your client's confidential information, so let's make sure to protect your website in just a few clicks. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Creator Pro Website. My name is Levi Hagen and I'll be walking you through the security setup step by step. Here at Creator Pro Website, we're dedicated to providing you with in-depth tutorials on how to create a website and how to make money online. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of our invaluable tutorials, helping you develop a passive income online. Today, we're gonna to be downloading a security plugin that provides services like malware scans for your website, login records to alert you of brute force attacks, and admin URL masking, and much more. And I'll be walking you through the setup from start to finish. But before we get started, it's absolutely crucial that you have an SSL certificate before watching this video. If you don't have one already, you definitely need to get one because at this point, they're essentially required for a website. There are three things that are necessary for a website, a domain name, a web hosting plan, and an SSL certificate. If you use my affiliate link, you get your hosting at a discount and a free SSL included. Problem solved. If not, you'll either have to go and purchase one through your hosting provider or research how to get one for free, which has its own advantages and disadvantages. The goal of this video is to show you additional techniques that you can employ to secure your site even further and not to show you how to get an SSL certificate. Now, before we get started, I wanna start by talking about what hackers hope to gain and what they will attempt to pull from your website. To put it plainly, they're looking to gather any information that they can make money off of. Whether that be credit card information, contact info for your subscribers that can be sold to unethical advertisers from your contact forms, usernames or passwords to gain access to your servers, malvertising, which is sending spam to your website visitors, SEO spam, which is just using your site's authority to promote fake information, or just to pull any other private information about your customers from your database. Now, all of that sounds terrible, so let's make sure we secure our website as much as we can so we can significantly reduce the chance of anything happening. So first thing we're gonna do is log into our WordPress dashboard. Let's go ahead and hop onto the computer. Perfect, so now that I'm in my WordPress dashboard, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the plugins tab and go to add new right here. And I'm gonna open it up on a new tab. All right, and then I'm gonna go over here to the bottom right corner to the search plugins bar and I'm gonna search iThemes. Scroll down just a little bit and you'll see it right here. iThemes security, formerly better WP security. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on install now and activate. Perfect, and now you'll see down here on the left-hand side, so on the WordPress menu, we've got another tab right here that's called security. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click on settings right here. All right, so then right off the bat, when you click settings, it's gonna take you to the security check. So you're just gonna go ahead and click on secure site. Perfect, and then after waiting a while, it's gonna go ahead and ask you to put in your email address. Now it looks like it automatically pulled my admin email for this website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on activate network brute force protection. Perfect, so now you can go ahead and go down to the bottom and say run secure site again. Perfect, so now we've got all green check marks. We can go ahead and click on the close button. Okay, and so now we are in the iThemes security plugin. And so you can see that we've got a whole bunch of different options or different services that they provide. You've got the recommended, which is only 27, but all is 34. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the all button right here. So before we get started on actually looking at all of these, I wanna talk about the three different types of prevention techniques for multiple layers of security for your website. The first one is gonna be hiding your backend login screen. The second is going to be brute force attack prevention. And the third is gonna be website backups. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first one and then I'll explain as we go. So first we're gonna go in the plugin, which we're already in here and make sure that you clicked on the all tab right here so you see everything. And you're gonna go ahead and find the one that says hide your back end right here. So hide back end right here. You can also, if you want to hit control or command F and then you can just type in hide and it'll search your page and highlight it for you. So just in case you didn't wanna take up too much time. So we're gonna click configure settings. And so first we just have to go over here and click on the enable right here. And so right here, login slug. So right now it's WP login. And so what we're gonna do is go ahead and change. So right now, if I wanted to log into my website, you'll see it would be create a proportfolio.com slash WP admin. And then I would be able to log into my website. So what we're gonna do is actually change WP admin to whatever we want. And that way, anyone who knows how to use WordPress can't just type in WP admin and then get into your website. And so right now I can change this to something like admin login, just like this. Now, this is just an example. You could change this to something like your last name or something that you can easily remember. But as long as it's different than WP-admin, this is just one extra layer of security because people won't be able to find your login screen. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on save settings. Perfect. And so to show that it works, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the website and I'm gonna go ahead and log out. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just copy my URL to make this a little bit faster and open a new tab, control or command V and wp-admin, perfect. And now you can see that it's gonna take me to a uh, not found URL right here. And so if we actually wanna log in, now we have to type in admin login, which is what I used. Perfect, so now if I go back to the security plugin, I can show you guys one more time. Go to the all tab and then drop all the way down to hide your back end. And so you can change this to whatever you want. It could be something that's specific to your business, but you know, of course that's up to you guys. And then also if you notice right here, the redirection slug. So as soon as we pulled up wp-admin, it redirected me to createaproportfolio.com slash not found. And so you could type in whatever you want here. You could say not found, or you could say page error or whatever you want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on save settings and get out. Okay, so the next one that I wanna to talk to you about is brute force prevention. So this pairs well with the first technique because it hides the login screen and that's where usually brute force attacks take place. So let's go ahead and find local brute force protection right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click on configure settings. And then also if you can't find it, just make sure that you're set to all because sometimes under recommended they don't show up. So configure settings. And so you can do two things here. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna go ahead and click on global settings. Now we're gonna be doing two things in order to prevent brute force attacks. The first is configuring our blacklist and whitelist for IP addresses. And then the second is gonna be limiting the number of login attempts. So let's go ahead and play with the blacklist and whitelist settings first. So under the global settings, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and you'll see right here, ban repeat offender and ban threshold. And then we also have the authorized host list right here. So just make sure that this is enabled. And so the ban threshold is essentially how many times you can get locked out before your IP address is permanently banned from the website from trying to log in. So right now your website has a default setting of five login attempts or 10 login attempts. And then if you try to log in five or 10 times, you'll get locked out once. And then you have to wait a little bit and you can try logging in again later. Now, after three lockouts, you'll get permanently banned from the website. And that's with the iTheme security. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and change this to two. Now, if you're anything like me who forgets his passwords, or at least the variation that I use for specific websites, then you're probably worried at this point, thinking that you might accidentally permanently ban yourself from logging into your website. Trust me, there's a workaround. If we scroll on down right here to authorized host list, this is your whitelist. So this is the blacklist, but if you use your authorized host list, this is the whitelist. And so what we're gonna do is click add my current IP address to the authorized host list. So when I click on this right here, you'll see that my IP address is now added to the whitelist. And so what we just did was make ourselves immune to the ban threshold. So essentially, if we're from this IP address, which is the one that you're from, if you clicked on this button, then you have unlimited lockouts. You can never get completely or permanently banned from your site. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save my settings. All right, so now we're gonna go back into the brute force protection. And then instead of clicking on global settings, we're just gonna go right here. You can see that the max login attempts per host and per user are five and 10. So those are the numbers right there. So we've got five attempts and 10 attempts. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back down to five, just like that. So no matter who you are, you only have five attempts to log in and then it's going to lock you out. And then if you get locked out twice, that's when our blacklist and whitelist comes into effect. So that looks good there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save my changes. And so what we just did right there with the brute force protection is dramatically reduce the chance of a successful brute force attack, especially when it's paired with the hiding of your backend, because now not only can they not even find where to start trying to put in passwords, it also only allows them to put in a specific number until they get permanently banned. So that's pretty good. Now, the third prevention technique that I want you guys to try is going to be another plugin. So we're gonna go over to the plugins tab over here on the left and click on add new. And then we're gonna go over to the search plugins and type in Updraft. Perfect, and so you can see it right here, Updraft WordPress Backup Plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Install Now and Activate. And then it'll take you straight to your plugins page. So all you have to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see Updraft Plus Backup and Restore. And so we're just gonna go ahead and click on Settings right here. 
perfect. And then scroll on down just a little bit more. And so you can probably already tell, but the third prevention technique that I wanted to go over was website backups. Now this is gonna be the last line of defense for security for your website. If anything were to happen out of the ordinary to your site, or you get locked out, or it happens to go down for any reason, you have automatic updates being saved like once a week or once a month. And that way you can always re-upload it the entire site hassle-free. It's the ultimate safeguard. So in order to do this, you can go ahead and do two different ways. You can first just go ahead and do a backup right now if you wanted to just get a backup ready to go. And so I can click on this one right here. And then I usually just leave the checkboxes the way they are and just click backup now. Now it might take a minute because it's backing up your entire website. All right, and then now you can just scroll down just a little bit. The existing backups, you can see that we've got this one right here. And so you can restore if you need to, or you can download it or something like that. So right here, click to download. So the other option that you can do is you can go over to the settings tab and then you can come over here to the files backup schedule and you can actually schedule out how often, like per month, per week or something like that, you want Updraft to save a backup of your website. And so all you gotta do is change it for manual and you can go ahead and change it to something like weekly or monthly. And so I'm gonna go ahead and choose monthly. And then you can do the same thing for your database uh, backup schedule. And so I'll change that to monthly as well. And then you can choose how many it retains as it schedules these backups. And so right now it's two, but I'm gonna change this to four. And I'll change this one to four as well. And so basically what this means is you're always gonna have four total backups in Updraft. And so as soon as it saves a new one, it'll delete the oldest one. And so it just basically keeps cycling with four backups. And so that way you don't ever get flooded in your storage space. And then after you set up the schedule here, you can go ahead and scroll down a little bit more and choose where you want it to go. And so I usually choose Google Drive, but any cloud service is going to work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Google Drive right here. And then you can go ahead and scroll down. I usually don't mess with any of these settings, but you can right here, check this box if you want a basic report sent to your site admin email. And so this is if you want an email sent every time Updraft takes a backup. So once a month you would receive an email, you just click this box right here. But personally, I don't really care to get flooded by a whole bunch of emails. So I'm gonna leave that undone. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save changes. All right, and so now it's going to ask for access to your Google Drive. So you just click on the link and log into your Google account. And it's gonna ask you to give permission to Updraft. So I'm just gonna say yes. All right, and then we're just gonna click on complete setup. Perfect, and so that is how you set up backups for your website. All right guys, so those were the three prevention techniques that I wanted to go over with you in today's video. In addition to the three that I mentioned in this video, you can go ahead and scroll through and actually see a whole bunch of additional services that you can do. You've got things like away mode, which means that you can disable access to your WordPress dashboard on a schedule. And so you can basically schedule times to be able to log into your backend. So that way, uh, when it's not those days, it's just completely locked out. And so that's kind of a unique feature. You've got things like file change detection. And so this basically just notifies you anytime like a file has changed like media or something like that on your website so I definitely recommend going through here and checking out all of their different options here but I just wanted to show you guys that they have a whole bunch of capabilities here all right guys that was my tutorial on how to secure your website I hope you were all able to follow along and build the impenetrable fortress that is now your website be sure to check out the rest of the channel for more tutorials and supplemental information regarding anything from securing your website to migrating hosts or finding what theme is best for your project our goal with each tutorial is to be your one-stop shop for web design, so check us out. And if you don't have a website already or an SSL certificate, be sure to click on that first link down in the description below where you can get your discount on hosting and your free SSL. I wish you all the best in your web design journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.